Yeah, well, we're, we're all told, those of us who are researching the Jesuits have discovered their, the, the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola, where they go into a semi-trance and they try to visualize Satan, they try to visualize God, they try to visualize all the saints, they try to visualize angels, and they create their own religion, their own experiential religion within their own mind. It's a form of of uh, brainwashing, self-hypnosis, and permutations of the spiritual exercise of Ignatius Loyola have been taught and preached and practiced in most of the churches, not just Catholic churches, but even the Protestant churches, the ecumenical churches. And literally, this visualization is an attempt to replace the scriptures with experiences, visualizations, imagination. You replace the Bible with the wicked imaginations of man. What was it in Genesis that said God repented that he had made man for the, that every imagination of the heart was wickedness? Every imagination of the heart was wickedness. That's what the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola are. And when you study this enough to you understand what it really is, you can only come to one conclusion, that they are literally using the television to give you those visualizations. You don't have to imagine them. They spoon-feed you those imaginations by the television programs that you listen to by the talking heads in the mainstream media. They paint for you a picture that it is not the Pope that's the Antichrist. They don't even mention that. They mention the Muslims. They mention the wars around the world. These are the visualizations that you have, and they all steer you away from the papacy. They all steer you away from historicism. They steer you all away from Protestantism, from the historical belief the historical understanding of the prophecies. They steer you away from the Bible into current events and news and propaganda, and they bolster and reinforce all those talking heads with visualizations, scenes from the shock and awe bombing of, of, of Baghdad in Iraq. That's the new reality. That's the visualization that they give you, that the, the, the real wickedness in this world is Islam or is Saddam Hussein or some other antichrist figure. It's all to keep you away from any discussion about who the real antichrist is, the Pope of Rome. And it works. It absolutely works. So every one of us have experienced whether we're willing to re, re, uh, admit it or not, if we watch television, we have experienced the visualizations practiced in the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. Its entire intent is to replace the Bible with fiction, with falsehood, with lies, with fables. Well, that's true, but they're trying to foment every kind of fear. They're, they're yes. trying to provoke in people apostol or rather apocalyptic uh, mentality, that these are the last times. But what we're seeing unfold before our eyes are Rome's version of the last times and not John's version of the last times, because John speaks of the papacy. Rome doesn't want us to talk about the papacy. The talking heads on the television don't want us to talk about the papacy. So they talk about racism. They talk about uh, economic uh, disparities, the rich versus the poor, the poor versus the rich. They want to talk about uh, the sex, women versus men, and men versus women. They want divide and conquer is their purpose get us in, a, in an apocalyptic point of, uh, frame of mind, acknowledging that these are the last days and that horrendous things are about to take place in the earth, but no mention whatsoever of the papacy. Oh, it's the blacks. Oh, it's the rich. It's the bankers. It's the Congress. It's the Republicans. No, it's the Democrats. Nobody ever says the Pope. 
But John speaks of Pope. Daniel speaks of the papacy. Paul speaks of the papacy. Henry Grattan Guinness speaks of the papacy. The early church fathers spoke of the papacy. Every Christian that ever drew a breath who read the Bible and understood the prophecies of John and Paul and, De- and, and Daniel spoke of the papacy as the Antichrist. Nobody talks about the papacy anymore. Nobody wants to hear it. They want to be entertained. They want to be comforted. Or they want to blame their favorite enemy, the Jews or the blacks or the bankers. It's all smoke and mirrors. And they've given you these visualizations that replace the truth of the text of the Bible and history. I've been doing the program for over a decade. And if God gives me breath, I'll do it for another decade to help wake up God's people. To restore Protestantism to restore the beliefs of the first century Christians, to restore the beliefs of the apostles and the prophets and the saints all throughout the Christian history, historicism, to dispel futurism for the Jesuit deception that it is. It's Roman Catholic teaching. It is the teaching of the Antichrist because futurism exonerates the papacy and puts the onus of Antichrist on some unknown figure off in the distant future. That's not the truth. The truth is historicism, that the papacy is, was, and always will be the Antichrist of Scripture. History bears this truth in so many ways, and the best I can do is to cover all of those ways the best I can to make the truth so apparent that even someone who resists the truth cannot any longer deny it. And that destroys ecumenism, the unification of all the world's religions back under the headship of the papacy that makes every king of every country of the world a servant and a vassal of the Pope, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what he calls himself. It literally, historicism, literally destroys single-handedly the new world order, which is simply the reestablishment of the old world order on a global scale. If God's people will restore themselves to the historical truth, the new world order crumbles at its foundation without a shot needing to be fired. The papacy once again becomes the Antichrist of the Bible, just like all Christians prior to the 1800s believed and taught. Then all the world turns against the Antichrist, even the kings that now serve him, and they will make her naked and desolate and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For strong is the Lord that judgeth her. For he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So saith the Apostle John in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And until we return to historicism, we're just following our noses down the yellow brick road back to Rome and back to destruction because when Christ returns, he's going to destroy it all. You don't want to be a part of this ecumenical movement. You don't want to be in an ecumenical church. If you're thinking about joining a church, you want to go to a church, you want to fellowship with other people, the first thing you ought to do, if you go to that church, is sit down with the pastor and the, and the board members of that church and question them point blank, who is the Antichrist? And if they can't tell you, they are an ecumenical church. They're on the primrose path to perdition. And you have to kick the dust off your feet and move on until you find true believers or worship God in spirit and in truth alone. Personally, I don't believe there are enough true Bible-believing churches in this country to go around. 
and I've taken myself out of the churches. I find no hope in the churches anymore, and I simply worship God in spirit and in truth right here in my own home, and I live my faith. That's the best you can hope to do in this world. You know, in the days when Rome persecuted the saints in the pagan Roman Empire, they met alone or one or two at a time. Sometimes they met in cemeteries. Sometimes they met in catacombs. The most unlikely places, sometimes they met in sewers because that was the only place that was, that was safe for them. That's what's going to happen. We're going to be pushed to extremities to share our faith with others. Be prepared for that, and don't expect to find the truth in any established 501c3 church that calls itself Christian when it teaches futurism. There's no truth to be found in those churches. You'd be better to read the scriptures for yourself and pray and ask God to open your hearts and your minds to the truth. And tune in to programs like Inquisition Update and learn about the history that Rome has taken from us that would help us understand that these prophecies have been fulfilled in history. See, they prevent you from having the same understanding as Chrysostom and Tertullian and all these other church fathers. They had history to compare with the prophecies. We don't have history to compare to the prophecies. See how easy it was to destroy Protestantism? All they had to do was strip any mention of the history of the Roman Catholic Church and all of her persecution of the saints out of the last 1,500 years of history, and they've accomplished it. The kids in the schools today, the kids in the Sunday schools today, don't know a thing about the Inquisitions, don't know a thing about the Antichrist, don't know a thing about what the early church fathers believed. They're looking for a future Antichrist. There's no way to refute futurism if you don't have a solid understanding of history, because in history, it leaves no room for doubt who the Antichrist is. So all they had to do was convince the government that this information about the papacy's history is divisive, it's, con it's confrontational, it divides rather than unites, it's not healthy for the nation of the United States to keep harping about these Protestant these Protestant beliefs, we need to unite all of humanity. We need a one world government, and we've got to have the Pope to do it. So we've got to silence all this history. So they took it out of the history books. They took it out of the seminaries. They took it out of the Sunday schools. They took it out of the church libraries. They want unity and peace, and they're going to have peace and unity. And then sudden destruction comes upon them as a woman with child. And we cannot be a part of this. Yes, we'll be called divisive, we'll be called troublemakers, we'll be called every name in the book, but the truth has a name that is above every name. His name is Christ, and he wins in the end, and we'd be joint heirs with him. No matter how much opposition we face, no matter how much persecution we face, we have to stand on the side of truth. We have to keep telling the truth until it brings that familiar ring to God's people. Let the Holy Spirit bear witness to the truth, and he will, because that's his job. And those who respond to the truth have the mark of God on their foreheads. And those who do not respond to the truth have the mark of Antichrist on their foreheads. <laughs>